What's up guys? Welcome to Korea. We are casting a game between Shake and Ungers. These are two very good players. If you guys don't already know, Shake is probably the underdog in this matchup. He's playing as Sweden. Uh, Ungers well should be probably pretty well known, I think among the entire community. He's been placing top 3, top 5 in tournaments for probably a few years now. He's definitely a top 10 if not top five maybe top three player i think he actually wait you know i might be speaking very wrong uh here because i think he even beat uh julian in a recent tournament so he is probably top two or top three player actually so um i probably wasn't even giving him enough credit but yeah julian uh, i'm sorry unger is one of the best right now shake also very good. Maybe not quite on that level, but uh, here we go. We have Sweden versus India. And the two Torps going down for Sweden as we start the game. He's ooh, a little bit of a battle here for a 70 wood treasure. And it looks like Sheik is going to get that. Yeah, he does. Okay, that's really nice. He, he actually can't utilize that right now. Uh, but he definitely will be shortly after clicking up to H2. So um, he likely already has his deck. Let's take a look. Yep, he does. He's going to send his three vills. He's got blueberries in there as well. Let's see. Anything super un or, uh, out of the ordinary in this deck. He's got a heavy infantry uh, card here. Uh, leather cannons. He's pretty well-rounded. I mean, he's got like a, a good amount of cards in multiple and three ages. A nice treasure for, for Ungers here. Uh, so yeah, you can't really say for sure what he's gonna do. I know Shake is a very good Sweden player. He's one of the best. Uh, not too many people play Sweden, but he's very good with them. So I'm sure he has his decks all figured out. Um, he's got lots of Caroline upgrade cards. He has light gun cartridges, where leather cannons train faster and are upgraded to infantry guns. Uh, that's an H3 card. 200 wood. Hmm. I mean, I wonder if that upgrade is really worth it that much. You even have to pay of a little bit of wood for that shipment so interesting i guess we'll see if he does end up using it um but yeah jaegers are also in there three copper mines so and this is one of the best cards for carolines is the Sve lifeguard i don't know if i pronounced that correctly but that is a ridiculous card it gives them 15 percent hit points and changes their range uh, their melee resistance to range resist so they are it's very difficult to find counter units for them at that point in the game. Uh, even skirmishers don't do so well. And then when you add in heavy cannons uh, to follow those Carolines, it's a really tough composition to beat. Uh, anyway, we have Shake up here taking a wood treasure and sending a vill up here to a mine to start getting the torp down up there. Let's see how many torps he has. It's just two at home right now. He's dropping one over here. I'm surprised he didn't... I guess he's hurting this. He wants to hunt that, but there's two of them there. He could have killed them by the Torp, so the Torp gathers it as well. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a great Sweden player. I play them a little bit. Um, that's what I typically try to do is... Uh, oh, he... I noticed... Okay. He mo meant... He made sure to put this Torp down before this one spawned the bush so that he guarantees he's not obstructed from that. So that's a really nice little play by him. Something to, to learn from and try to put into my own game. Even though I don't play Sweden much when I do that. Because I notice that they always spawn on the right. And you can do a certain pattern to ensure that you don't get blocked. But yeah, that's a nice little move from him. So uh, we're heading up. Market is down for Ungers. He's getting some upgrades. So it looks like he's not rushing. He's getting a pretty nice time on his Agri Fort. Um, but nothing too crazy. Don't expect a, a Sepoy Rush or anything of that nature. He is clicking up right about now. A little bit of idle TC time. What is his first card going to be? Let's take a look at his deck. He has some water cards in case there's some water play. Ponds. Yeah, that's what I named my uh, my decks where there's there happens to be water flags, but you're not necessarily going to go full water. So, um, All right, so Unger's going with foreign logging. Very nice typical card for India if they're going for a little more of an economic play. Shake dropping his barracks outpost wagon. And he's going with Dominions, 
which gives him four torps, gives some additional uh, hit points, and allows them to receive economic shipments. I think back in the day, they used to also allow it used to allow them to get military shipments. That was probably yeah, because at one point they didn't even have the the button split. Oh, will he be able to? No, those torp builds so quick. Seaboy do a decent amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to kill it right off the bat. He, he should be able to take it out eventually, but two leather cannons are on the way. 150 wood, uh, 150 food to send that shipment, but it's going to help uh, push these Seaboy back. He's going to lose this one torp. Uh, well, you know what? I guess it depends how much you can force the fight with these Carolines. If he's willing to sacrifice one or two Carolines, it looks like they are taking the fight. Nice micro there. He gets one Seaboy that was damaged by the tower, but he is going to end up losing this Torp. Uh, these have these leather cannons take quite a while to send, so that is going to be the demise of that one Torp. He should be able to save this one, though, I think. Let's see, no market for him. He's got a couple Torps up top. Uh, so here's the two leather cannons. They should get a decent shot off and hold these Torps. Yeah, wow, getting one Seaboy and another. So that's a good value right there. And let's see what Ungers is doing over on the other side. He followed that up, that foreign logging up with 300 export. He has the consulate dropping down now, so good timing on that. Didn't uh, force it a little bit early. He's putting it up where uh, just in time where he's going to be able to click the the ally alliance that he wants and uh, utilize. That's one part of the macro that you know you got to try to utilize the resources as you need them and as they come. So some people will put the, the consulate down er, too early and then you have to wait before you can click the, the alliance or uh, put it down a little bit late where you don't get the you don't get it as soon as you can. So he's pretty good time on that. He's going with the Ottoman consulate. And so that's probably going to be villagers still making sepoy. Sending a few six to be to be exact down to the bottom mine that he's anticipating um, Shake is is utilizing which he is correct and We have four sellers coming in from that consulate like I was saying was to be expected So let's see. I'm curious how shake is gonna follow this up because I know these leather cannons They cannot take out this aggro. I would not even attempt it. They're pretty fragile. So Okay, so wow, look at that. The 700 wood going to the forward torp, which are being, being gathered by, I believe, two or three of these torps, and gathering pretty quickly. So, uh, nice little boost to from that card from Dominion, where they don't have to use their villagers to gather the, the crates. They can just put it down by the torps and don't even have to worry about macroing that. A little poke, but the sepoy are spotted very quickly. So not getting anything done there. They're headed back. Uh, Shake's probably not going to be able to cut them off. But, you know, actually, if he takes this route really well. Oh, but uh, Ungers is heading back. He's a little bit undecided. He knows he's probably, at this point, uh, spent too much time to get back safely. So I think he's probably going to go back towards Shake's base. Um, well, we'll see. I mean, I, I think he's like, oh, okay, he he's probably cutting me off. I, I gotta do something else with him. He's in, oh, that, man, that is so smart. He picks not just one sepoy, but the lowest HP sepoy to send him to see if he's going to get cut off. Like that is that you see those little things and you understand why players are top two or top three. It's like you take those little things where you want to make sure if you do get cut off, you're only losing one unit, not all of them, and you're losing the one that's most damaged. Like that's such a good play. And he ends up actually surviving, not just with the single one, but with the other one, the other five as well. So it's just like a really nice play there. Um, but hold on, we have a double barracks for Sweden. Ten Carolines popping, and he's got a shipment coming in. Oh man, we got a big fight here. This timing, we got Sepoy about to pop. Looks like I think Unger, Unger's going to take this fight. We got Minutemen coming. Leather cannons not being focused by Agra. But tons of units popping out. See, Sour are in the fight up front. But the leather cannons are really actually doing work. Ungers needs to send the shipment. Whatever he, he could send five Seaboy or four Sours. But he's going to get the two leather cannons regardless. He'll be okay for the time being. Though there will be quite a bit of Carolines. And another leather cannon coming in from that shipment. So actually, 
I'll take that back. He's not okay at all. He's got a bunch of resources, but he's being se severely overwhelmed by all these Caroline. He's got five Sepoy on the way. Uh, I don't even think these are going to... Yeah, they'll probably finish from the Agra, but Agra will go down soon after that. He got a little bit of a raid done, but... Wow, so he didn't even get those five Sepoy. That was so close. That is brutal. I think he does have Minutemen still available from the Ottoman accounts. Actually, it's not Minutemen anymore. It's the ASAPs, right? So, I... Yeah, I think he has that, though. He does get the barracks up. He's get, He's got so many resources. Almost like he's trying to think about aging. Like, he's in a bad position. He needs to just make units. And he already used the Minutemen, so... This is not looking good. He's got the, the Consulate Hus coming, but... Not for his Carolines. That is not what you want. He's got Gurkha and Q, but man, this is uh, looking very dire for Ungers at this point. Shake has a good eco going. He's got uh, Torp population up to 140. Um, the weather cannon is being focused down, so that's good for, for Ungers. And he's bringing back the Seaport that we're out raiding. He's good, looking to defend. He's taking the engagement. This could be good. He's got units on all sides. Nice surround. Not enough units, but he does have some good counter units in the Gurkha. He's got another shipment available. He could be sending the Sour. Um, I think that he actually like poked this apart pretty well. That's actually amazing. All these Carolines are dropping, and all that's remaining is about a handful of Sepoys, a handful of Gurkha, and now it's a handful of Caroline. That is actually insane that he was able to hold that so easily. Like the multi prong attack and defense. But hold on, we do have a couple more leather cannons on the way once Sepoy does realize that and he gets blasted to oblivion. Uh, Unger's getting Vil HP upgrade because he knows that they uh, might need that pretty soon with the way this is going. His villagers are out on the map. He is double producing uh, two barracks. He's producing Gerka. He's got wood coming in. He's actually looking like he's stabilizing. He's ending his relation with Ottoman, which is always sad that you lose the line of sight, but I think he's probably going over to Brit at this point to get that HP boost, and Imperial Bureaucracy is coming in. That is a huge upgrade. I don't know if this is the time for it, though. He's under pressure. And four Hus is... I mean, it's a, such an impactful shipment. But we do have Sepoy on the way back there to help defend. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, holy. There's a lot of leather cannons here. Is that four of them? Yeah, that is four leather cannons. Wow, that's... The Sepoy are taking this fight. Uh, they're going to lose it, but they get some decent damage done. Gurkha can then handle the remainder of the husk, probably. Since there's three of them, but only two full HP. Four leather cannons are pushing in, though. And... Uh, a bunch of Carolines. He's going to be able to get two full batches from his next barracks queue. Um, Ungers is again looking in like he's in a ton of trouble. He still has a shipment. He needs to send either four Sours or maybe he was going to go for the Tiger Claws, but he doesn't have time for that. The push is here. It's happening now. And again, he's defending pretty well. I mean, one leather, one leather cannon's down. TC is focusing another one. TC is full HP, so he'll be able to withhold, withstand this uh, onslaught again. And it looks like Shake is not comfortable standing around there. These leather cannons really do die pretty quick to TC fire. Uh, he doesn't want to stay around for that. So Ungers is going to live again, even though it looked like it, was, it could have been a very tough situation for him. Um, and meanwhile, Shake is like, okay, you know what? I've had enough of this pushing in and losing my army. He's going up to the Fortress Age with the Exiled Prince. Still queuing Carolines. And his eco is looking pretty good. 30 vils and 170 torp population. Now let's see. Did he did he end up sending blueberries? No, he did not. So these are some of these are probably really close to losing their berries. Actually, a few of them already did. Um, yeah, I, oh, yeah, he's he's really starting to run low. So maybe his economy is gonna tail off a little bit. Ungers is looking like he's going to stick around in H2 quite a bit. He sends the four sour. I think he's about to smash a fight here. He saw Shake age up. He wants to take a fight very soon. Vet Caroline is actually not coming in. This is rough for Shake. 
the, all the leather cannons are down. Carolines are like, we got to get out of here. I forgot to queue up the veteran tech. He now has it in queue. I mean, man, it's just it's wild how these Carolines seem to just melt from Sepoy and Gurkha. I mean, yeah, they both Sepoy have significantly better stats, but it's still so surprising when they fall so quickly. Um, here, here, Ungers is trying to cut off the Caroline army, but they are about to be vet. So I'm not sure if he wants to. Well, with the Gurkha are coming close behind. Man, that is a bad angle for Shake. Ungers is getting some really good trades here. Seapoy are doing work. Two Falks are on the way for, for Shake. He does have the Vet Caroline. He is still producing from two barracks. Um, so he's definitely still in this. He's he's might be in a little bit of trouble. But is is Unger is gonna age up? It looks like he's sending a Vill up here. He's he's gonna Oh, Caravel's around the way and he's building a dock, so and the resource is telling me he's not trying to age up anytime soon. He's going uh, full infantry, getting a batch of British musketeers from the consulate. And uh, he just sent two caravels to, I guess, help protect. Oh, oh, I was I thought for a second Shake was fishing, but no, not quite. But those caravels, what's interesting on this map is you do often have hunts that, that um, fall over to the side of the map. And those caravels can actually get some... Wait a minute! Big raid for the Carolines. We got 14 vills over here for Ungers. He is not noticing, and Shake's doing the smart thing by getting in a great position before attacking and setting off the alarm. Wow, oh my gosh, we're going to have at least 10 vills. They're both, vills are being killed at the same time, so Ungers doesn't notice he loses 14 vills, maybe even a 15th one that was uh, produced and headed over there. I think so. Three vills for Shake go down, but oh my gosh, the Falks are here at Ungers' base. Oh, the Sour could have got a good pop, but he didn't notice right away. Ooh, he's not even going to get... Oh, my God. He didn't even get one Falconet, and he lost five Sour. That's brutal. The TC will finish one of them, which is like a consulate prize. But, uh, consult... Consulate? I think that's incorrect. Anyway. Oh, there's a third Falc. Now, now uh, Shake is back to two Falcs. We have another collapse happening. Will... Ungers be able to hold and and for a third time at least maybe even more i mean there's been so many crazy holds there's so many units here vet or caroline vills are popping out they're gonna get a good fight on the falconets oh my gosh i think oh my, i think i think Ungers is actually gonna crush this fight there's so many gurkha so many sour i'm sorry sepoy and gurkha and yeah the carolines are getting smashed again it's amazing it just it never ends Ungers just holds every single time, and it's not even close. It's not even close. He did lose. Remember, we got to remember he lost 15 bills in that raid. So he's only at 35, which doesn't sound terrible, but, I mean, it is 18-minute mark. He is India. You should have a bit more than that. He does have the two trickles, so. Um, but Shake, he's got 32 bills. His, uh, his berry bushes are starting to run out, but there are still gold mines that he's gathering from with the torps. Uh, he's going nine Carolines. He didn't send any berry bushes, so he's just going full military. Oh no! Oh my God! Please tell me that three Falks sitting with minute one HP minimum. Oh my God! I'm actually shocked that uh, that Ungers didn't pursue that. Wow! You know, actually, I think oh, we have we have Rajput raids going on up top. What? I mean, what? Ungers still not trying to age. He's got five fishing boats now. Or at least a fifth one in the queue. Uh, he's going to be running out of research. He built a stable, which is very curious. Uh, I'm not sure what he wants to... I mean, versus Carolines, you almost never want to make a stable, especially as India. Uh, oh, my God. Here we go. A another push. I don't think... Three Falconets? I don't think... I don't think Ungers can hold this one. I would be very, very surprised if he can hold this. I think this is where it's it's just a different ball game. And the thing about this is the berry bush is running out for Shake. I anticipate he's gonna keep producing falconets as his main main military because all the food is starting to run out. So yeah, we do see another falconet in queue. Oh my god, it's another brutal raid. Another brutal raid on the same gold mine. There's gotta be over 20 vills in total that died on that gold mine throughout this game. And he's safely mining up top. It's it's just kind of a question. I mean, obviously, if he wasn't down there, then uh, Shake would probably be pushing up top. But you got to think that maybe that, that position is not where you want to keep going. Uh, Shake is actually surprising. Well, you know, 
think about it again it's not surprising he knows he killed about 20 bills throughout this game so he thinks he's ahead economically he's not trying to take a fight but he does have five falcs and typically you want to take a fight when you have five falcs you don't want to wait for your opponent to get a counter but um Unger's still in h2 he's sending 700 wood now which is actually shocking that he hasn't sent that yet is india uh we have 117 total pop for india 102 for for sweden 32 vils to 38 because of the fishing boats a sour raid picking up the minutemen over here um and shake is going down positioning towards the bot we got another we got another push guys do you is it actually possible that he can hold again oh and a nice red coat raid on shakes villagers i don't think he's seen that holy cow this is gonna be this is gonna be intense we have we have rajput positioning for a flank we have a musketeer raid that is finally noticed but and we have great positioning for the gurkha spread out but five falcs and the sepoy i just i don't know if it's gonna be here we go five falcs a huge smash of all types of units rajput are in there we got sepoy we got sour we got gurkha and then we got a ton of falconets and veteran carolines ah uh, we got one falc down there's still four more there's no way yeah this it's actually finally time where ungers cannot hold this after so many attempts from shake to push this tc it is finally going to go down and man there was some really good attempts there at at holding and delaying this game but i think the inevitable is finally here with all these falconets let's see does he even, he has more carolines on the way i'm curious did he send blueberries or or something let's take a look no so he he has he's just still all in military there was only one villager in that tc Ooh, but gurkha are getting caught off oh and some consulate redcoats oh that's that's really brutal losing 10 gurkha that was absolutely essential if you wanted to come back in this game and at this point i just don't i don't see it as a possibility that was brutal the waypoint there was just not ideal and uh i just don't see how ungers i mean i said it already in this game but at this point i really don't see how we can kill this army at least falconets and there's 600 wood on the floor I anticipate Shake will some point send some villagers over there, but he's actually on the hunt. He wants to he wants to end this game, end the military of Ungers. You can see in the score both players probably realizing that uh, it's not likely Ungers can come back, but we, they probably both thought the same thing earlier in this game too. So you never know. And when you have fishing involved, one player on water and one player not, thing crazy things can happen. The longer the game goes, if he can hold on to the, his villager count, but I mean, he's he's up 12 vills. He has the trickles, uh, which kind of negate the torps, especially as the mines are about to run out. Um, we got some sour in queue. That's that's what what Unger's is trying to counter the Falks with. Uh, another 10 vills just getting de de absolutely destroyed and shot into the lake. You can see the splashes where the villagers plummeted off the cliff into the water it's actually amazing Ooh, but we do have caravels that oh i think that's what he was trying to do is just hesitate and try to get uh shots on the falconets he does get a few shots he kills one of them but uh first caravel does go down second one very low hp uh it's valiant effort but i don't see i don't see it happening i don't see it i really don't um TC is going back up for Ungers though, so you can't. Oh, but we have a we have a frigate for Shake. He actually he built that from. Wait, where's his? Oh, okay, he and he's making a second frigate too. Okay, so he's going full water. He doesn't want India to come back because of the water. And here we go. Uh, looks like. Uh, the Gurkha are moving in. That's uh, that is a huge mistake. I, he, maybe he realizes he probably doesn't have a chance, and yeah, he, that's probably what it was. Uh, he just finally realizes there's nothing he can do to kill this army with H2 India. Frigates are on the water. His 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 water economy is done for. He does get a TC up, but so many villas have been killed in this game. I mean, there was some great holds from Ungers there, like really unbelievable ones. But at some point. The Vet Carolines and five Falconets are just too much to be able to hold. So 
Um, Shake coming out with a nice victory against one of the best players in the game. Pretty impressive, I gotta say. And he made the right choice making uh, some frigates here to deny the water for Ungers and really put him uh, into a position where he had no choice but to resign. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this game. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.